I, I not got a clue what I wanted to do um, and sort of fell into selling advertising space for, for, for a while but it, and it was the best thing I ever did because it toughened me up commercially you know so there's something for graduates there get interested in how your prospective employer makes money okay. R really makes money but if it's a hospital uh, uh, you know find out how they serve customers or patients quickly efficiently get get under the skin of what's actually going on and for me having you know spent life as a salesperson that was really really good experience I didn't enjoy it but it was a really good thing to do I, I ran a few of the salespeople, not not many of them, mm -hmm. um, and I had to recruit them, okay. which meant we used agencies and we, and we got them in and we did interviewing and stuff. And I loved that bit of it. So I wanted to do more of what I enjoyed and less of what I didn't really. I, I you know, wasn't you know didn't think it through any more than that. Um, couldn't get jobs in HR in those days. In those days, uh, it, it's it's a bit more relaxed now. But in those days, you had to be qualified. You had to get. It, in those days, it was the IPM. It's the CIPD now, if you want to get into HR. And I did a master's um, in HR management at Aston. Uh, in those days, that meant I got my IPM, Institute of Personnel Management, qualifications okay. by doing a master's, which seemed to make sense to me. I do a number of things. So I teach. And I teach in the areas of leadership and management and engagement and stress and change, basically, at a number of universities. I run a coaching business, so I have a number of coaching clients um, um, in loads of different industries. I still run a small headhunting business, but really small, just me, really. I also run an outplacement business, so as well as trying to find people when they get fired, when they get made redundant, I kind of put my arm around them and help them into the marketplace. I do quite a bit of that. I run an engagement survey business, uh, and in old language, that's just satisfaction survey. So staff satisfaction, isn't it's okay. the buzzword these days is engagement. You, you need them to be engaged in what they do. And then I do um, c consulting work, basically. It's just me. I have hardly any fixed cost in that. I hate fixed costs, so there's no, there's no cost in the business. The only reason I hate fixed costs is it makes you do the wrong thing if you've got cost. So if I had lovely offices in Piccadilly, with 50 people that I employed, you have to chase business. Yeah. You have to say yes to things that you don't really want to do because you, you're feeding the engine. Mm. The, the rules of the game are different, I think. So in a corporate, um, yeah, it, 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 it's obvious. The things, the, the things are just bigger, mm. right? So there's thousands of people, and there are big structures, and there are there's a hierarchy, and you always have a boss, and their boss has a boss, and so there's a you know a grading scheme and all of that sort of stuff, and you you have to learn how you navigate your way through that. The bit you have to watch out for is is that the politics matters more than the outcome. That um, I heard a lovely phrase the other day that profit matters more than purpose mm. you've got to be really careful when that starts to happen when you when when you then jump into the world that i jumped into all that's gone mm. there's no hierarchy there's nothing i have no status you know i was, I was board director of a FTSE 250 business with a chauffeur and all of that stuff <laughs> and then i go to to you know i make my i have to make my own Tea. There's no one who does. If, 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 yeah, if, if the printer runs out of toner, I, all of that stuff. Yeah. You have to be what I call confidently lost mm -hmm. doing what I do, meaning I have no idea where my business is going to come from. I, yeah. I know what I'm doing next week and the week after. The, the, the furthest out I can ever see is about 12 weeks in terms of what's in my diary. When you're in a big corporate, it kind of never like that. Everything's planned. Everything's nailed down. You have to put a forecast in. You have to know exactly how much you're spending. All, the, all of that stuff is codified and logical and structured. Yeah. And then you step into this world that says, well, well unless I do it, no one's no going to do it. Do it. Yeah. Now, you see, I wanted to do that. Yeah. Um, but if you didn't, or if you hadn't thought that through, it would be really scary.
fundamentally, it, 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 it's looking after myself. I was, I, what I've loved about it is, is things like repeat business. Mm. So, so go work with a client, and if you do it really well, they want you back. And I just love that. So, so it's, been, it's been making my own decisions, seeing if they're right or wrong, and you win or you lose on the back of that. It really mattered to me. And I got a bit fed up in corporate life, frankly, in HR, of just sacking people. Last three or four years of my life, that's all I did. But it was things like closing factories. And, and the point of that, so to wind it back to what I've just said, it, 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 it wasn't just the fact, you know, it's tough when you take someone's liberty away from them. You, you know, that's not easy. But I was doing it because of someone else's mistake. Yeah. So someone else had decided to buy a factory in China mm. that we should never have done. And, and I, just, I just wanted to make my own decisions for yeah, right. Really that really exactly. mattered to me. It's a lovely little three-step model, right? It's in the Jim Collins book called Good to Great. It's called the Hedgehog Model. And it's just, what are you best at? What do you love doing? Where do you make money? And that's a brilliant little model. Mm. So for anyone that's thinking of doing their own thing, spend some time thinking that through, because you better be good at it, because yeah. you've got to spend a lot of time doing it. Yeah. You better really enjoy it, because you're going to spend a lot of time doing it. And then there comes a point where you've got to send an invoice out for it. Yeah. The one thing I did do, right, without thinking about it, but it was the best thing I ever did, is whenever I moved jobs, I moved industry. Okay. Because you could do that in, in HR. Yeah. You can kind of do it in finance. You can do it when you're in functional roles. So I was computers and high tech, then booze, uh, then sport and fashion, you know, then banking, and then consultancy. And what that meant was, when I set my own thing up, I knew all of those industries. Yeah. So there's so two things, that. right? I knew, I knew them all well enough to um, not make a fool of myself, sort of thing. Yeah. And I knew loads of people. And you know, you go back to the the idea we just talked about. Um, one of the things I was good at and loved doing was getting to know people. I just knew loads of people, and and I didn't know why I was doing it at the time, but it was it was a fantastic thing to do. Don't call it networking. If yeah. you don't like networking, call it something else. I networked for 20 years without calling it networking. Mm -hmm. And then when I wanted to set my own thing up, I had thousands of people to go and talk to. And, and when you're small, you only need one of them to give you a bit of work, yeah. right? And, and I got really lucky. It was a HR contact that I had, worked at a place called Scottish Courage, and she gave me some recruitment to do. That would never ever have happened if I hadn't met her, and I met her at a golf thing young people don't quite know what to tell you about what they've done. S same with, they don't realise they've got loads of contacts. Yeah. Loads of them. It's everyone they've ever met. It's their teachers, it's their parents, friends, it's... Leverage up the hell out of that. Uh, that's changed over 12 years. 12 years ago, I was looking for the ones that said yes. <laughs> I didn't care where they were, right? Because you tra <laughs> and I was. I, I, I then took a leaf out of my own book. So this, what are you best at? What do you love doing? Right? And, and I do it that way now. So I, I have this rough antennae that's all about, can I help them or not? Because when I first started, I did say yes to everything, right? And I cocked it up. I, I did some work that was really good, and I did other work that was dreadful. Mm. And, and it was dreadful because I wasn't very good at it. I wasn't interested in it. Whatever the reason might be, and, and over the years I've just got loads better at knowing where my sweet spot is and where I can really help. Yeah.